pharmacist, I graduated my master's and doctorate programs on toxicology, which is an area of pharmacy. Today, I am preparing the first video of my new channel. In this channel, I will try to give a vision about healthy eating and personal care issues from a scientific perspective. Sometimes, I will include art and culture topics. I hope that we will have a lot of fun together and we will go a long way in science, art and culture. Just have fun while learning. Today, our topic is vitamins. As a pharmacist, one of the questions I get the most is, should we use vitamin supplements? What is vitamins and minerals? The stories of sailors can shed light on the roots of vitamins. The famous sailor who discovered Canada, Cartier, year 1534. When Cartier arrived on present-day Canadian territory, a hundred of his 110 sailors were awaiting that from scurvy. The natives of Quebec treated those sailors who were now certain to die with white pine bark and needles. Cartier describes this miracle in his travel book as follows. If all the doctors of my city and all the pharmacists of Alexandria had come together, they would still not have been so successful in eight days. The cause and treatment of this disease, which was responsible for the mass death of its age, was unknown in Western medicine in those years. About 30 years after Cartier's travelogue, this time Ronsius noted that this disease was not seen in the sailors of the ships carrying lemons and oranges for frights. In order to grasp the gravity of the problem, it is useful to take a look at the notes of Admiral Sir Richard Hawkins. I witnessed the death of 10,000 sailors from scurry. A, B, C, D, E, K. I'm not counting the letters of the alphabet for you right now. These are the building blocks that ensure the functioning of the body, just as the vitamins and letters are the building blocks of birds. Phosphorus, calcium, potassium, magnesium, iron, zinc. Now some of my friends might think I am counting the periodic table in a confused way. However, these are also minerals. In fact, most of these minerals are elements that you will see in the periodic table and all of them are important for our body. Vitamins are organic components, that is, they contain carbon in their structure. Those that do not have carbon atoms are called inorganic compounds. Vitamins are organic compounds that we need to take in small amounts for our bodies to function. They are builders, defenders, care workers of the body. They enable the body to build muscle and bone, use nutrients, retain and use energy and heal wounds. To be convinced of the value of vitamins, Think of the old time sailors who couldn't get enough of the vitamin rich fresh foods I described just now. They had scurvy. But vitamin C, which is abundant in vegetables and fruits, was a simple remedy for these diseases. While bacteria, fungi, and plants can produce their own vitamins, our body cannot, which is why we need to import them from outside. Minerals also have a very important function in our body. For example, phosphorus is an energy store in molecules such as ATP. Calcium has functions not only for our bones, but also for the backbone of DNA and RNA. We need potassium to send signals to neurons in situations such as muscle contractions. Iron is important for hemoglobin. It binds oxygen glowing oxygen transport in red blood cells. So, how does the body get vitamins from the outside? This depends on the form the compositions take. 
Vitamins are divided into two groups, fat-soluble and water-soluble. The difference between them determines how the body transports and stores vitamins and how they get rid of excess. It consists of water-soluble, vitamin C, and eight different types of B-complex vitamins, each unique. They dissolve in the water parts of fruits, vegetables, and grains, which means that their passage into the body is partly direct. As soon as they are taken into the system, these vitamins enter the bloodstream directly. Because blood fluid is water-based, water-soluble vitamin C and E can also move freely in our body based on the principle of like dissolves like in chemistry. That means substances with similar chemical characteristics will dissolve in each other. For fat-soluble vitamins, which are found in their products, butter and oils, their journey into the blood is a little bit more adventure. These vitamins are transported throughout the stomach and intestines. When acids called bile are secreted from the liver, it breaks down the fat and makes it ready for absorption from the intestinal wall. Because fat-soluble vitamins cannot benefit from the structure of water-based blood, they need something different to move them, and that help comes from proteins which act as the courier that clings to the vitamins. Proteins deliver fat-soluble vitamins to the blood and the whole body. This difference between water and fat-soluble vitamins determines how they get into the blood, but also how they are stored and excreted from the body. Most of it is easily extracted by the kidneys. Therefore, most of the water-soluble vitamins must be reintroduced through the daily food we eat. But fat-soluble vitamins are more durable because they can be stored in the liver and fat cells. The body uses the part where it stores vitamins as a pantry and meets its needs from there when necessary. This does not mean that we should do a vitamin lot, because they are sufficiently stocked in our body. Now that we understand the logistics of transporting and storing vitamins, now let's take a look at its functions. Some, like many B-complex vitamins, form coenzymes that assist enzymes in releasing energy from food. Other B vitamins help the body use this energy. With vitamin C, your body can fight infections and builds the structure of bones and teeth, producing collagen that heals wounds. Vitamin A helps in the production of white blood cells, which are important for the body's defense. It shapes the bones, protects the eye cells, and increases the power of vision. Vitamin E acts as an antioxidant, so we get rid of substances in the body that can damage cells. Finally, vitamin K helps our blood to clot because it helps the proteins involved in clothing. Without this variety of vitamins, people would suffer deficiencies that lead to many ailments, such as fatigue, nervous breakdown, heart irregularities, or rickets and scurry. In addition, excess vitamins can lead to poisoning in our body. There are a lot of myths that it's a good idea to load the body with supplements. In reality, the goal is to get the balance right and take the vitamins as needed. When we have an adequate and balanced diet, we get the vitamins and minerals we need with food. Unfortunately, when I lived in the USA or the America, I witnessed that millions of people in America are regular vitamin users. But the real question is, do they really need it? Vitamins are not miracles that will bring us extra energy, youth or health. And this is not something we can decide on our own if we are not doctors or pharmacists. Because if you have a vitamin deficiency, it must be monitored and determined by a doctor's control. If you do not have a deficiency, the most important thing for most adults under 50 is a balanced diet. It is not appropriate to start vitamin supplements.
Most vitamins and minerals are easily absorbed through food as they also contain fiber. So when should you take additional vitamins and minerals? First, when you are over the age of 50, a standard multivitamin mineral supplement is recommended because the absorption of what you get from your diet begins to decrease. Second, at a young age, if you have gaps in your diet, you can take standard vitamins. For example, because my vitamin D is deficient, I take vitamin D from outside with the approval of a doctor. Except for these two situations, it is definitely not appropriate to take vitamin supplements. If your body isn't deficient, there is really no reason to take too much. There may even be dangers associated with it. For example, too much vitamin C can cause kidney stones. Too much vitamin E can cause mortality. Some supplements, vitamins and minerals taken from the outside can interact with some drugs you use and cause adverse effects. For this reason, inform your doctor and pharmacist of any medicine you use. Again, vitamin fortified drinks. For example, energy drinks. Unfortunately, I do not recommend them either. Because it contains sugar, it can cause weight gain and increase your blood sugar. If you have diabetes or potential for diabetes, they may cause side effects for you. There are dietary reference intakes for all vitamins and minerals for all ages and genders. If tests show you are deficient in a vitamin, try what works best for you when choosing what to use and again you can talk to your doctor, pharmacist or a dietitian to be sure. In this video I would also like to add the supplements that should not be taken. First, weight losers. This was once called strawberry in Turkey, fruits of Gardenia kombucha in America. In some studies, both of them have been found to have many side effects. In fact, Golden berries were once collected because they damage brain cells. Some scientists frankly argue. However, my personal opinion is that supplements offered as weight loss should be not taken. Because this is another dream we want to believe this is another myth. There are certain ways to be healthy, I always say. Nutrition, rest, good stress management and sports. The same things goes for losing weight. Second thing we should not take is weight gainers. They also contain less protein and more carbohydrates. For example, weight gainers. You gain weight, but not from muscle, but from fat. If you want to consume such things, check the content first. If you want to gain weight again, Consume products that you buy from markets and grocery stores that are rich in content. Olive oil, peanut butter, eggs, like this. I hope I have provided useful information. If you like it, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye for now. Stay healthy.